All right. Thank you so much. Hi, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is. Okay, so you guys should be all set. Did okay, you see your right. host announcement? I did not. All right, let me go back and double check. Okay. No, I have you as host. Great. Hi there. How you doing? Dara, let me get Jim in here. Um, I'm having pretty bad uh, side effects from a vaccination. Oh, so I'm so sorry. Might not be all here, but I'll try. Okay. Well, if you have to go off, this totally understandable. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I'd rather I'd rather have this good distraction. Okay, well, we'll try to be distracting. <laughs> I've got a full agenda and then some, so <laughs> I'm trying to get Jim in here. I don't think I. Who else is coming? Well, let's see. Who RSVP'd? I think we have everybody except for Lori and Mikey. Uh huh. Yeah, Lori is, um, is busy this week, and Mikey is on vacation, which is great. We have our new commissioner coming in this today, so we'll get to meet him. Great. Very exciting. Okay. Oh, there's Jim. Okay. Come on, Jim. Allow to talk. Yes, we'll let you we'll let Jim talk. <laughs> Hello, now can you hear me? Hey Jim, how are you? Hi. All right. Good evening. We're still waiting for a few more commissioners here. Hey, Dara, did you get copies of the minutes from the last meeting? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't find the, the meeting. That's why I asked Dara. I'm trying to figure out if they, if something. Did you get the minutes from the last meeting? No, I did not. So then, there's some yeah. uh, some happened bad on my end because I thought I sent them. Shoot. Well, that's, that's a, okay. Well, I usually send them out in a couple of days. I can go look at the website. No, you can't because they're not on the website. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, hey, you can, Thomas is here. Right? Hello, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hello. I don't see my picture up there. Well, you got to turn your camera on. <laughs> Okay. It's not working the way it usually does, and I'm I don't see any place to turn on my camera. It's just totally different. Now let's see if I can do something from here. Okay. All right, I have promoted Hi, you. Hi, this is Robert. Are you, are you able Robert? to hear me? Is that you, Robert? Yes. Are you able to hear me? I can hear you. Hi there. Okay. Great. Hi. How are you? Right. Looks like the other all set. A couple more of us. Okay, here Let's we see. go. Oh, there you are, Jim. All right. All right. Uh, Robert is here. I'm here. Yep. Yes. I'm trying to put you in here. For you have permission to talk, but I don't have you in here as a panelist, but you, that's fine. Okay. Um, as, long as, as long as you can hear me, that's the important. Are you driving? I am driving. <laughs> oh, dear. Do we got Dara? Okay. Me. Who's missing? Me, all of us. So we. Okay. Well, 
Welcome to the Amherst Public Art Commission meeting of August 2nd, 2023. I am Terry Holt, I'm your chair. Um, in light of the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, then Governor Baker issued an emergency order on March 12th, 2020, allowing public bodies greater flexibility in utilizing technology in the conduct of meetings under the open meeting law. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access may do so in the following manner by clicking person attendance by members of the public is permitted, but every effort is made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event they are unable to do so, or regardless, we will post this on the town's YouTube channel shortly after the meeting. That is my spiel. So welcome everyone. We all have and share my screen. Uh, one thing we are missing, I believe, is the minutes from July. So I think Jim's going to get those out later, and we can uh, circle back on uh, on uh, reading those when they come in, and we'll talk about that in September. Sorry about that. I, oh, was that I don't know what happened. It happens. Don't worry about it. Okay. So on my agenda, I'm having ten. Very exciting. Introducing Tom Warger, our newest public arts commissioner. Hi, Tom. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Well, I love your I'm background. Here. Thank you. Welcome. You're not actually there, though, are you? That's just. Oh, no. That's, this is uh, Kauai. Oh, you're not in Hawaii currently with a I'm raven not. behind you, apparently. <laughs> There's a little bird. I was oh, that is there. <laughs> well, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Do you want to? Thank talk you. to us a little bit about how who you are what you're doing here and sure how you well, hope to serve on this commission okay okay a little bit of background to start uh i retired uh last year took a gap year as, as young people do these days <laughs> and uh then decided to seek out some volunteer opportunities um so you know i thought about my interests and my background um, and decided that uh, one of the town committees would be something I might enjoy. And with my uh, lifelong interest in art and the art scene and artists, um, this felt like a very good match. Um, I'm also, also volunteering at the Kestrel Foundation, um, pretty much the same basis, get a little bit of outdoor um, in, involvement that way too, and with their with their public. So my work was um, well I started off in the last century as a French professor, oh. and then became um, academic administrator, assistant to the provost, then uh, head of information technology, CIO. Then I came to Amherst um, in 1995 to be IT projects coordinator for Five Colleges, Inc. Mm -hmm. I did that for a few years. And then since 2000, uh, from 2000 to 2022, I worked as an independent consultant to colleges and universities on um, IT matters. Okay. And sprinkled through, and I had 81 clients over the years. Wow. And I've been interim CIO and I've been interim library director and um, had just a, a very varied experience that way. So when it comes to management, I've got you know quite a wide background, planning, budgets, personnel, projects, um, stewardship, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I have that kind of bureaucratic uh, background also. We'll see how that- a lot to offer. Play. And we're very grateful that you're here. Well, thank you. So my, my hope um, on, on this committee is um, to be able to uh, participate and, and help in a, in a wide, wide scene of things that uh, I understand the purview of the committee to be, and also to, to partake in the, um, the, the reflection leading to maybe 
you know, a plan and mission statement, revised mission statement, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm a newbie. I haven't been a new person in anything for eons, so I'm not quite sure how to do it. Oh, but jump right in. I'll pay attention. <laughs> I'll pay attention and try to be helpful. Very great. Well, thank you so much and welcome. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you. Yes. I'm glad you're with us. Thank you. I have a quick question. Did you send anybody else to Cherry Porter? Did you just send it to me? I just sent it to you. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, so um, if you have the agenda ahead in front of you, we'll just move right along. Um, first, invite public comment. I thought we had uh, somebody from the public uh, joining, but I they may have gone away. I do not see them anymore. So I don't think we have a person from the public. So we're just going to move right past that. Approval of July minutes. We're going to wait until September for those. So let's move on to the chair report, and I will read that to you. I'm going to skip a little bit because I want just for time because um, you'll be able to read it all. But uh, we have to focus on one particular subject on this meeting. Uh, so poetic dialogue. Uh, I talked to Camille Peters for repairs, and um, he is wonderful. And I was informed by our Comptroller Holly that uh, Amherst cannot pay a bill. Uh, into an invoice until the work is completed. We can't prepay. I'm learning things along the way, of course. So um, so I told Camille that when he is finished with um, repairing poetic dialogue to let me know as soon as possible so I can get Holly to start working on the check so we get him paid. So uh, Camille said he will let me know as soon as possible. He's been uh, uh, putting in the bolts or some something. Um, so I'm excited about that. I hope that will be finished before the block party because I'd like that to be part of you know downtown looking great. So um so there's that. Um the portal gallery at Boltwood, very exciting. We have a winner. Um, so on Sunday I sent letters to Dominique. Uh, Dominique is our winner. Um, and I sent letters to the other artists who submitted proposals saying thank you for sending in a proposal. Um, we now need to come up with a timeline for Dominique and uh, give her a reasonable amount of time to work on the rest of her project. So we have four pieces for the windows and uh, we need to come up with a budget for replacing the sign. So what I probably need to do is contact DPW or somebody needs to contact DPW and uh, tell them what we'd like for the new sign and ask for uh, an estimate so we know what we'll be spending. So as far as I know, um, so the winner is getting 1500 that was agreed on in the call for artists. So we still have um, about a thousand more than that for the sign. We don't need that much. So we'll, we'll, we have some, a buffer, so that's good. So um, I will report back at the next meeting, I hope, uh, with an update from DPW about what that's gonna cost. Um, so the APAC Town of Amherst web pages, um, I was very pleased to meet with uh, the Amherst Director of Communications and Civic Innovation, Brianna Sunrid. Um, she, uh, she, she, we sat down and talked for a while about our web pages, and um, she was, uh, she told me that really public art has the, the the largest number of pages on on the whole website, which is pretty cool. I've been, of all the other commissions and committees. We have the most pages um, and it makes sense because we're art. So uh, we're very visible. So that makes a lot of sense. So she has asked me to uh, work on auditing our pages and updating them and uh, updating some forms that are on there, which Mikey and I have talked about. We need to update the town hall form because it's outdated. Um, for instance, we're not asking $20 to, uh, to look at uh, applications. So that's been waived. Um, to make it more equitable, which is, um, I'm really happy we did that. So um, we need to make some changes for the forms and update some pages. And uh, so I'm going to start working on an audit. You're welcome to help me as well. If you want to look over the site and uh, we have a number of pages, just kind of look through. And if you see outdated things, you can jot it down and then we'll get back and talk about this more in, in September. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, we also talked about uh, the possibility of having some branding for uh, public art, which I'm excited about, as you know. Uh, and uh, I, I, I asked them if we could have a logo and branding, et cetera. And uh, both Paul and Brianna said, sure, yes, this, that's fine and expected. Many commissions do so. Um, I'd like to have a more visible brand for what we do. So um, I'll be working on some ideas for that and I'll put those in front of you guys. Um, I've got a really cool idea and I'll tell you about that later. 
Um, we also talked about having a web presence, uh, like having a website. I know we have talked about that as a commission and uh, uh, both Paul and Brianna said that that's not a good idea. And I, I have to agree with them because of uh, sustainability. It's just really very hard to keep a website going. I mean, I'm a web uh, designer admin, but once I'm gone, <laughs> you know, this, it's really hard to sustain a website. So I, I totally agree with them. So I want to continue working with the town of Amherst and keep those pages updated as much as we can. I think that's the best, the best plan for us. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, the September 23rd block party, I have asked um, Matt Holloway, the Amherst Cultural Council co-chair, if we can have a presence, a table um, at that event. And uh, they have said, yes, I filled out an application. So uh, we can talk about what we'd like to do at that. Um, I think we had a couple of ideas last meeting, but I think um, just very simple, uh, you know, kind of just tell, showing people who we are, talking about our projects. Um, we could talk about the portal gallery. Um, we might be able to talk about making it public. We'll see, not sure. Um, and uh, we, I had this idea of possibly having an activity, um, really just a very basic activity of just making art because <laughs> we are public art. So I thought that might be fun to just bring some materials and allow kids and people just to come over and make some art. And maybe we'll figure out a place where we can put that so that it's um, um, just a, a fun thing to do for, for kids and stuff. So we can talk more about that. Um, moving on, um, we have a new featured artist and, uh, oh, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, Karen Reese Ten Tenell. Karen Reese Tunnell um, is our newest featured artist. And let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, she, I talked to her in email and uh, she just moved here from uh, Georgia. And uh, she lives in South Amherst. She actually lives, I think, a few blocks from me, which is really exciting. Um, she has, she, she took these beautiful photos of South Amherst and in her meanderings and uh, different seasons. And then she came back and did colored pencils. And these are all colored pencil drawings, which blows me away, of South Amherst. And they're, they're beautiful. So if you get a chance, uh, scoot on over to Town Hall, uh, take a look at those, this beautiful exhibit that Mikey, of course, helped put up. Thank you so much, Mikey. I know you're not here, but very grateful to Mikey for all her work, selecting these artists and helping put these these paintings up. So this is really nice. Excuse me for interrupting, but I'm now going to need copies of those for the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to making it public, although there are, I don't think there are enough of us to make quorum. Uh, okay. Four out of seven. Oh, well. That's actually. a majority. Yeah. Okay, um, Tom, are you up to date on what, what we're doing for making a public? I know you. Yes, I've been following the minutes and the recording of the last meeting. Excuse me, wonderful, okay. So um, I've been doing a lot behind the scenes um, to try to keep this going, as you all know. Um, so um, I wrote up something uh, about where we are. So I, I shared with, the commission um, that our liaison, Gabrielle Gould for the grant, um, she shared with me some thoughts about the future of this project. And I sent, uh, I, I will send that information. Um, which is, uh, I'm concerned about, I have a lot of concerns and I wanted to share this with you so that we can come to a decision together. Um, I have been having challenges contacting her regarding the timeline for making our public project. Um, I noted in June that the emails from the New England Foundation for the Arts to her and me weren't being answered. And so I reached out. Um, Gabrielle has been like many of us on vacation. Um, makes a lot of sense for periods that it didn't time line up well with our contracted timeline. So the NEFA reached out and let us both know that Amherst would need to renegotiate our contract because we missed those, uh, those deadlines. So um, I, Met with Paul last week, our town manager, and uh, he is the only one who can sound, sign contracts. So he told me that he will work on renegotiating this contract so that we can hopefully revise those deadlines and get us back on track. 
So um, that's the contract. So we need to discuss the future of this project. Um, it sounds to me like we are gonna be losing Gabrielle on this project as our liaison. Um, she has suggested that we uh, end the project, um, but of course this is our call, not, not, uh, not the BIDs. Uh, it's our grant money, so uh, we have to make some decisions. Uh, the four of us, I think we need the whole the whole commission to actually make this. This is a, a big decision. We put a lot of work into this. Um, I put a lot of work into this. Uh, we put um, we put this out to the public. It's been promoted. We've been very excited about it. It's a, a public art project celebrating our BIPOC community. So um, I'm really really on fire about this. So we need to discuss what we're going to do. Um, I reached out to Angela Mills, who is out of town until Thursday, so that I can get some guidance from the town because I feel a little over my head here. Um, we, I don't think we can unilaterally say, yes, we're going to go ahead with this project if we don't have uh, some kind of representative from the town, because uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of work for a commission who meets monthly <laughs> to do this work um, with open meeting law. It makes it really, really difficult to get projects done. So we need a project manager of some kind. So, uh, so Terry, what are you? Could I, sorry, could I ask yes. you a question, Terry? Please. This is Robert. Uh, hey, Robert. Yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm a little confused and, and I know I missed the meeting a couple of meetings ago, but so the last I recall, I mean, this, this has unfortunately been um, quite a saga, uh, this project, in terms of getting su getting support from the town uh, in a consistent manner. Right. And so what I don't understand what happened with the BID involvement, because the last I remember when Maureen, who was the town planner, who was the staff member, when she left to take a job at a different town, there was that void and, and the BID stepped in. And then what what happened with that? I I'm I missed I missed the part in between okay. when they were when they became the li liaison and, and now that apparently they're not anymore. So can you just bring me up to date a little bit on that? I can try. Um, I have not had a lot of communication from uh, Gabrielle about the challenges that she was having. So I'm, I'm only okay. taking uh, the email that she sent, um, which I'm going to read so that it's in the in the record. So that um, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, All right, I'm going to. So have I to I didn't have any idea. Before you read it, okay. Before you read it, I'm going to. If you read it, I'm going to have to attach it to the minutes, and it's going to be public. If that's what you want, that's fine. But just. FYI. I don't want to. Um, I don't think I want to do that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna summarize. Okay. I actually yeah. don't know yet. Just. I think if I could suggest, just tell people what happened without reference to the email. Okay. Because I agree um, with you. I, yeah, I, that's that's fine. That's I wouldn't fine. attach it. So it's. It seems to me that Gabriel has been having some some private problems, um, and I think that has made it really hard for her to continue being the liaison for us. And so she would uh, like to okay. back to back off. Um, and she suggests that we also kind of drop the grant. Um, I think because of the lack of support. Um, I I don't agree. Um, I don't think we should. Uh, I'm. I was. I've been very excited about this project as you all have been um so uh, yeah I so sorry, in, in your conversation with uh i'm sorry i i don't mean to interrupt it's hard on the phone because i can't see what people are talking about but in any event um in your conversation with paul bachelman have you discussed you know the idea of someone from the town kind of taking the lead given that as you pointed out already you know most of us are new to this commission when this whole project started yeah you know none of us had that none of us had that training uh it was all kind of um amorphous when we began in yes. the fall uh, so is there anyone uh who's staff who can be assigned to this or that's a, a great question so when i met with him 
Uh, I was still under the assumption that when Gabrielle got back from her vacation, we would just kind of move on and we'd have our deadlines rewritten by the NEFA and we could just, you know, put it back together because I really think we could still do that. Um, so this email that I got from her was a surprise. So um, I don't know. It is my understanding that they are still one planner down. So uh, I don't know if there is a representative who can step in. I know Angela Mills has done a lot for us, and I don't know if uh, Paul will ask if she can do it. So um, I'm going to reach out to Angela um, um, once I talk to you folks and, and set up some kind of a meeting so that we can figure out what to do next. But I wanted to first uh -huh. get a sense of what you all think we should be doing. Harry, um, I, have, I have the impression that since Paul did not try to dissuade you from going ahead with the negotiation. I think uh, I, I would read that not as any kind of guarantee right? or even an outright encouragement, mm -hmm. but uh, I would, I, it, it feels to me like, again, easy for me to say as a newcomer, but uh, you know, it's time to double down on this and try to get it, try to get it into place. Uh, we're well along in it. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we, there's been enough publicity or information shared about it that uh, we wouldn't want to walk it back. And just right. as a general matter, um, if, you know, in the world of grants, if you, if you turn one down or pull out of it, exactly. it generally comes back to hurt your reputation one way or another. So I that's all about to say that I'm, I'm, to I'm inclined to go ahead with it. And having said oh, that, I'm am, I, am I frozen? Excuse me? Yeah, you are. Okay. Oh, this my um, internet connection is unstable. Is can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dara, please yep. go ahead. Uh, I have a question about the word negotiation. Okay. How much negotiation sounds like a like could be a tiny thing or a lot. Do so it's hard to tell. Sounds to? So um, I am not a um, negotiator <laughs> or a fiscally uh, aware person very much. Um, it was my understanding that because the contract was written uh, very precisely about certain deadlines being right. uh, being met, that right. once we passed those deadlines, it kind of made the it made it uh, the contract not null and void, but uh, needing to be redrawn. Um, and it's because of the grant money, like it's tied to money, so. So redrawn means changing the deadlines. It probably means changing the deadlines and having a new agreement agreements. Um, and, the and, the town, and the town manager who can sign contracts said to you that he would take care of that. Yeah, with yeah he said he would take care of it because he is the person who signs the, the contract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, it's more like a technicality than a sub yeah. substantive problem. That's now, how I think it is too, Tom. Um, so, uh, so yeah, what I think could happen is uh, maybe we'll get another town representative to help. That's my hope. Um, I don't know if the BID will withdraw its sponsorship. I think that would not, I don't know what's gonna happen. So, but I wanted to see what you all, how you felt. And it sounds to me like uh, you're interested in going forward with the project. Is that my understanding? I think it would be a terrible thing to turn down a $10,000 grant that goes to an artist. I agree. Well put. Well, I agree also that it would be, I think it would, you know, to echo what's been said, I, I think it would be very uh, unfortunate if we were the only town in the Commonwealth to have received the grant and we can't get our act together to actually carry this through, carry this through to fruition. I, I just think it's, you know, it's frustrating as I think we expressed earlier on in the process that there just hasn't been more attention paid to it uh, by the town. And I, I don't quite understand why that's been the case. And I, I, I'm, I'm for moving forward, but under the same conditions as, you know, we talked about the last time we were kind of in this decision uh, at the, at the same sort of crossroad um, in terms of, you know, I think most, if, or many of us obviously, have full-time jobs and don't necessarily have the time to devote to the project. And I just feel like there needs to be some uh, some staff 
uh, leadership on this for it to really, really move forward. So, so I, I guess I, I would give a, I would give a qualified yes to moving forward, but I, I, I really, I, I would hope that there would be some top support. I think there will have to be, um, and that will be my conversation with Angela and with Paul, Dara. So what would the staff person be charged with doing? Well, if so, just like the town planner, um, it's a person who can can pull everything together. So the reason, so we have three proposals uh, that are out there that I have not even looked at because I was supposed to be one of the judges and I did not want to be. I don't even know uh, what those applications look like or what what that is because um, I've been trying to stay you know uninformed. So we need someone to lead it so that so that it has the lack of bias and it has um, uh, a direction from the town. And because we you know again we, we are volunteers. And it's a timing thing too, Dara. It's a it's a amount of time spent on a project is also um, as as volunteers. I've already spent a lot of time on this, and uh, we need to have a, a paid employee who can who can help us carry it forward. So um, I think that the town would agree, and I don't think to speak to that what you were saying, Robert. I, I don't think the town uh, wants to lose. This either I, this is what's happened because of it and with Maureen leaving it did, it did leave us in a bit of a lurch and they are still trying to find a new planner so uh so right because we haven't we haven't even selected a the uh the um uh the jury right i mean in terms of the, yep. the people who are going to be so that that still has to be done so there, there's a fair amount of coordination that has to be done yes in, in my opinion i realize um the difficulties which are significant well, the last thing that I, happened am i here am i frozen can you, can you hear me yep i said in, in my opinion i understand the difficulties that have occurred and this problems of of, of work load getting the project done but it looks to me like uh, giving it some priority might be wise right yeah. okay uh, terry suggestion yes. in talking with andrea and paul you might want to try to sort out um mm -hmm. you know what division of work might be possible right. what do we need uh, a staff employee to do right what might you know a volunteer from the committee be able to do without endangering um you know the impartiality that's 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 required right it, it seems you know it, just at a guess you know it could be one of these situations where you know you've got the town the bid and us and everybody thinks somebody else is doing you know some of the lifting right and so if we go to the town and say hey we need a project manager we're going to dump it all in your lap uh that's oh, we're never going to do that tough, yeah that's a much tough tougher proposition than to say look we need a certain amount of help and you know we put a lot of volunteer time in this already and we'll continue to yep. do that so let's kind of work out a plan and a reasonable division because that way paul isn't doesn't feel he's he's making an open-ended or um you know ungoverned commitment right well i hear that but i also know how much work it is to get these things done and if we can find a tactful way to to solve the problems you just mentioned which i i hear we can find a tactful way to get somebody's staff a, a sign that has the appropriate number of hours to devote to it it would really be wonderful okay dara you're muted oops I'm freezing a lot. I'm, I'm, and I wasn't frozen. I was. I needed to unmute. Um, so I'm confused by your saying that you were 
didn't look at the proposals? Right, I did not. But why would you have been looking at them? Well, because I, I am the one who wrote up the call for artists. I'm the one who okay. um, did everything. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I have access to the forms. Okay. Um, but I have just, the reason that I was selected as being one of the judges. I, somebody else on our commission would like to step in. That's really fine. Um, it's just at the time when we talked about it, nobody else had the time to be a juror. So I put my name in and so I was going to be, but I don't have to be if somebody else would like to be. But if you are the juror, isn't the jury already constituted? Uh, we have um, reached out to, Gabrielle reached out to a number of judges that we had, we gave her a list and uh, I wrote up a, a letter um, with the help of Lori uh, and we and she, uh, Gabrielle used that to send it to our our judge list, and we were waiting for people to uh, get back to us. That was how this was left. So June twenty fourth was the last uh, email, I believe, um, that we got back from a judge saying they were interested. And the response from Gabrielle was, "We're we're still waiting for a few stragglers for replies." So that's kind of where things were left with the jury. Um, so what can we do about that? Stepping in. I, I was thinking Gabrielle was going to be coming back on vacation to go forward, um, but I haven't got a lot of communications um, about the difficulties that she's having. So, um, so, the, so yeah, that, that's where we are. Uh, I think the five of us are in agreement that we should go back. Uh, we should go through with this uh, with caution, Robert. I hear what you're saying about you know asking for uh, you know, asking for help, obviously. And uh, when I meet with Angela and possibly Paul, I will bring that up. Uh, as for how much labor this will take, Jim, I really don't know. I don't know a division of labor this, this kind of project would take. This is my first, you all know how green I am. <laughs> so uh, in terms of time, I really don't know the time. Well, based on my service in the previous, before you showed up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a guess. It takes a lot of time. Right. And uh, so is the problem about your being, a, so if I understand, you don't think you there's an issue in your mind about being a, looking at the proposals in advance? Yes, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I should be looking at the proposals in advance. But you would be looking at all three of them in advance, correct? is selected we would be giving the given we would be giving the link to view the proposals to all of the judges and so at that time i would be looking at those yeah well, there's, a difference, there's a difference between looking at them before the process actually starts the jury right. process and looking at them once it does start i think that's a very significant difference and right. we can make it clear for the record today you know that terry has take has taken a very scrupulous step to be careful about neutrality. I absolutely. Uh, and this is a, um, a really important project celebrating the BIPOC community. Um, I am not a person of color. I am a person who uh, is, is a white person. And so I want to stay, uh, I want to be scrupulously uh, unbiased and um, allow our other jurors to, to look at these proposals and have a conversation all together. That was how this was intended in the beginning. I want to stay true to oh, well, I, you know, I'm not, you know, if, if it would help a lot uh, that you looked at them in advance, um, then I'd like to discuss it because, you know, like judges get briefs. I'm, I'm a lawyer, by the way, <laughs> judges get briefs and they read them in advance of the hearing and nobody thinks there's anything wrong with it as long as you're looking at all of them. If you looked at one of them and not the other two, I think that'd be terrible. But if you're looking at all three, what is the harm? I'm trying to identify a harm. So tell me this, what is the point at this, right now, at this juncture of me looking at the proposals? Is there a reason for me to look at them? Because I don't see one. Until we oh, can move forward with this project, I don't see a reason for me to look. Okay, then don't look. I thought it was an impediment. I misunderstood you. So don't look. I just well, don't see a reason why. So 
if there's no harm in not looking, I thought there was a harm in not looking because it was making it hard for you to manage, do your job as the chair of the committee. That's what I impression I had, that's all. No. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not really, it's not really impacting how hard the project will be. When you do one of these projects, you have um, you have to figure out how to pay people. You have to talk to the, the artists about timelines. Um, uh, each, you know, and you have to we select one, and then we have to work with that, and we have to get a contract. There's a lot of a lot of things in there that uh, I can't do. I can't write a contract. Um, you know, I can. Uh, so at the end of this, there will be a celebration, and I plan to be the person who will help create the celebration because that's that's where I shine event planning is fun for me so uh that's the time I hope to um anything else about this project or should we move on uh Terry could I ask one last question sorry um what what was the original timeline published in terms of um notifying artists I, I guess I, I ask because of, for the three people who have submitted proposals um Obviously, I mean, I, it seems at this point we're not sticking to the original timeline. I think just uh, in a show of respect, we might want to notify them at least to give them a sense that, you know, the, the, the timeline is likely going to be changed just to keep them apprised so that they have some sense that, you know, they they haven't been rejected or they haven't been accepted, but at least let them know what the status of the, the project is. Okay, I, I agree. Um, and I, I can do that. I Because this happened today that I got the email, um, I I haven't I haven't known what to do. Um, so no, I no, think yeah, that's a I good, understand. I'm just saying I, I think really it, might, it might be useful to do that. Yeah. Maybe I should also uh, uh, let our judges know we're having a delay, so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess to the extent you know who the judges are at this point. I think point. that's a right idea. Thank you, Robert. Well, at least one of them knows. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Somebody knows. Um, well, they're, they're very well sequestered at this point. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's a good point. I'll, I will I will uh, reach out to them. Uh, I, I might wait until I talk to Paul. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think at this point, another week or so is not going to make a difference. I, I just think, you know, as uh, having been on the other side of grant applications and things, you know, you sometimes feel like you avoid, and it's just nice to have an update, even if it's to say that, you know, our timeline has been pushed back to X and, you know, just wanted to let you know. Right. Yeah, I have a caveat, which is it's not done until it's done. So, we don't have anything accomplished right now. And so to say the timeline will be pushed back to X when we don't have our staff, we don't have a new contract, we don't know what the deadlines might be, we don't know if they're going to give us the contract. I'd be careful about making definitive statements until good, good point. I think it may be enough to say that we're delayed mm -hmm. and you know, not say a whole lot more than that. Right. Yeah, that, that that's fine. I, I I was just giving an example, but yeah, I think just something to indicate that um, whatever timeline we had originally published uh, is not necessarily in effect. And okay, just so people are aware. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I will follow up on that. All right. Anything else on making it public? Oh, do we need to vote to move forward? I've heard what you've all had to say. Um, maybe well, uh, let's have a formal vote so that we have it in the record. Is that okay, Jim? To vote for on what? I don't understand. To, move, that, to still to continue to move forward with this project. Oh. Do you think that we need to have a vote on that? I, so that I, can, I think everybody. I can just put in the minutes that the, by acclamation we agreed to keep going. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. I think we have all agreed. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Um, uh, let's see, making it public. Uh, okay, we need to come up with a timeline for the portal gallery at Boltwood. And um, I don't have any sense for what that timeline should be. 
Um, I think that our artist has already created two um, pieces of art for our project that takes five pieces of art. So um, it was my feeling to, um, to ask her to finish this by the end of September. Uh, if you think that's too fast, then I can certainly have a different date. Uh, I don't really, we don't have anything in writing yet. And I, I looked through our records that I have here. Uh, I can't really find much about how they ran this in terms of timeline and contracts. So I'm a little starting from scratch here. Okay, I might be able to come up with something. Great. Also. Well, I thought there was some time requirement from, who was it, the Cultural Council who, who granted the money? I, I thought that they, I thought, I thought that they had set some kind of schedule. Well, the fiscal year, I mean, is, was over June 30th and um, paying, right. paying out for this uh, project uh, is going to need an extension. And I can talk to Matt about that. But in terms of uh, project completion, I don't think the Amherst Cultural Council really dictates that. I think they just they just want okay. an update. Um, so uh, it's my understanding okay. that we'll just be able to pay our, our artist and for the new sign out of our funds and uh, tell the Amherst Cultural Council thank you. And we hope to apply for many more grants next year and be much better about time. <laughs> You might uh, you might want to uh, propose a date to to Gabrielle. Mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, if you if you ask her an open ended question about when do you think you can finish it, that may be a little bit harder for her. But if you say September thirtieth, and she says, "Oh no, can't do it," right? I can propose it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I sent a, a letter congratulating her and I told her we would be following up with her. And so um, I think in the follow-up, I will I will ask her how se end of September looks and see what she says. So, oh, so good. Dara, is that too soon? No, I don't think you should ask her. Okay. I think you should have real deadlines. Okay. So what is your feeling about what the deadline should be? Uh, I, I don't have the original call in front of me, so I don't know exactly what was hinted in that call, but if you want to put it up by a certain date, you have to give a, an artist a real deadline and they have to hope to meet it. Right. So when I have the contract that we draft contract that we did in 2022, so I'll send it to you. Oh, thank you so much. That'll be really helpful. Okay. All right. So we can give her a, a solid deadline. Um, what do you suggest that is then? Well, I have to, what is the date you need it by to put it up? We don't have any end date in mind. I don't believe there is, I don't believe we have a deadline right now. I don't think it makes sense for us to set, do a hard set on a deadline if we can't, if we can't figure out what it should be in terms of, you know, getting, giving her the good chance to do a good job. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like we're, terribly constrained by other other considerations so I don't again I, I want to go back to what I said it's it's not a question of of really floating too soft a proposal just say you know something to the effect that you know we're you know the, the council is the council is looking at the end of September as as the deadline for completion mm -hmm. you know if she wants to then come back on that and say well I need another two weeks in that case, we'd be in a situation where we could finalize the deadline and feel a little more confident about it. We could sit here now and say, well, October 15th, October 30th, September 30th, and we're just, we're just shooting in the dark. Well, I don't think we would be if we knew when the pieces were meant to be displayed. Like, when do you want to have it Oh, bye. Well, we're we're gonna have some kind of a celebration. Um, and do you know when uh, that is? No, well, it's what it's when we decide it is. Really, uh, I had uh, I talked to Shoshona a little bit about this project, and she told me that um, when they've done it in the past, they have a a small celebration to kick it off, and the artist is artist comes, and some town people come, and the commissioners are there. So I thought, uh, but she didn't say a particular date. So. So wouldn't you set a date for wanting to have it up and 
your celebration of it and then work back from that. Yep. That's usually how we do project management, right? I think so. Let's well, see. you do that when there's a real reason to know that that's the, the, the good day. Okay. Let's see. I have, I'm just going to look at the uh, the call and see what it had yeah. what we had in there. The consistency with past practices would be a good indicator if it's if. Well, the problem is that we don't really have a legacy of uh, documents and information about how this was done in the past because mm -hmm. six of us are new. <laughs> so we we don't have a a, a lot of uh, you know, the leader the leaders of this commission uh, moved on, so we're all kind of okay. figuring things out on our own here. Um, I was going to see if I could find this call real quick. Um, here we are. Oh, that's not it. So I don't know if we actually gave a time in this. I'll have to find that later. I don't see it right now. Oh, here we are. Okay. Um, in the past, so in the past, they they did this in the in the spring. And it was uh, awarded in May. So we are past the time that this has been done in, in the past. Um, we were pretty busy at that time. <laughs> so we didn't get it done. So we, we are past our deadline. And I hope that this will be the only year that we are past our deadline. That is my plan. We have good reason to be past our deadline. So um, I'm going to talk to Matt, uh, make sure there's no problem with uh, paying our artist. Um, and I think we will pick a date. We will say end of September so that we can have a celebration in early October. Does that sound okay? That's for me. Okay. And I'll also be talking to DPW to get some kind of an idea of what a new sign would cost. Okay. Does that sound mm -hmm. good for everybody? Yes. Please. And. Uh, if she gets back to me and says, eek, I can't get this by end of September, we'll renegotiate. So I think okay, that's so, a place to start. So wait a minute, I'm sorry. What are you going to do again? I am going to talk to Matt about um, the award money to make sure that there's no problem with paying the artist and for the sign out of the grant that we received from Immerse Cultural Council. And I am going to uh, communicate to our winner that the end of September will be the deadline uh, and we will have it celebration in early October. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will also be reaching out to DPW to get uh, an estimate for the cost of a sign. And we're gonna do the sign a little bit differently. Um, the sign that's there presently, you've already seen it. It has, it's one sign on one piece that gives information about the gallery and the artist. Um, and that wasn't a really great idea because we changed out the artist. So um, we need to redo the sign so that it is just a sign saying what the Boltwood Gallery is and that it is, Amherst Public Art, and we will have a separate sign for the winner. And I think that is something we can seriously have a screw on sign thing that we put on the side of the wall, like you do for other art galleries. So, um, so that's what I'm, I'm thinking. So that sign would be a more permanent sign. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Robert, you, you good on this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anything else on Portal Gallery? Should I move on? Dara, how you feeling? Fine. You hanging in there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, back to my agenda. We've got um we're gonna uh wait on the strategic planning. We've got a lot to discuss. Um I think Robert and I are going to have a few more powwows about uh, how we want to get started with our strategic planning and our uh, discussion of goals. Uh, I am looking forward to kind of honing in on a new mission statement that reflects this current commission's uh, values and what we hope to, to do in the coming years. I'm looking to make a, a three-year plan if possible. Um, and um, part of that will be a uh, applying for grants and finding out how we're going to be funding our projects. 
Um, and those projects, we need to get more input about from the public about what we should be doing as public art. And that's something I feel very strongly about. And I think you all do too. I don't want siloing. I want us to talk to our, our, our residents and find out what, what we can do to make our town better. Uh, Terry, could I just make a suggestion? Um, it seems like the um, the block party might be an opportunity to uh, get feedback on that. If there's some, you know, simple way we can, uh, I think you mentioned, you know, if we had a table, right? Um, you know, figure out just have a sign asking people to. Uh, you know, write a note about what they think of as public art or what they want to see as public art in the town. And, you know, that that seems like an opportunity to collect some uh, information from people. That's a great idea. We could have a, uh, a form there on the table and we could also have a, a QR code to an online survey if we wanted so that we could uh, get people who are we're right there in person and also people who are more technologically advanced. So that would get kind of more equitable access to a form so we can get some feedback. That's a really great idea. Yeah, I think to make it as simple as possible. And um, I mean, I've seen some uh, doing some reading on other towns, you know, they have sort of large boards and people write, but then someone has to transcribe all that. So I think however we figure out to gather the information in the easiest possible way, but it seems like there'll be a lot of people. Hopefully, it'll be a, you know good weather for that, and uh, you know it, it just seems like a good chance for us to get get some input. That's a, a great use for that table. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, if you want to be part of the people talking about survey, um, we can meet uh, early September after our next meeting so that we can uh, put together some good questions or we could start that process now um, or we could start it online and not talk about it, but then come together and talk about it at our next meeting. Does that sound good for everybody? Yeah, I, I, I like the idea of starting, starting it online and then picking, picking up the initial contributions. And okay, so I gotta, I gotta do the open meeting thing. You can send the questions, you cannot discuss them. Yeah. Yes, we know. Not discuss, and you can you and nobody else can discuss them. And right. in particular, if if A talks to B and B talks to C and C talks to D, you have now violated the open meeting law because that is quorum. Yeah, that's why I, th I thought we we could um, send. Uh, I could send out some initial initial thoughts, and we can uh, compile. Can we uh, only can we can we just compile and then talk about it for the August uh, September meeting? You know, I think you're you're getting pretty close to the line if their initial thoughts. If it, it, usually the the things that get sent out to all the members are things like minutes to be approved and documents and that kind of thing. But if there's a, if if there are thoughts which constitute a discussion of the subject matter, I think that might not be too wise. Okay, these laws are challenging. I think that um individually on our own how about we come up with some really good survey questions that we can bring up at our next meeting I think that and at that meeting it. we yeah. can talk about putting together the survey and what that would look like does that yeah. sound well, good you can send, i think you could probably send a document that says draft questions yeah. to be discussed yeah. at our next meeting yeah, okay. yeah that sounds good yeah, yeah. the problem with committees always is you know not, you don't want to fall into the trap of only thinking about stuff for the hour that you meet right um, now we do have the constraints of the open meeting laws and have to be uh, very, very careful, but uh, I think we've come to a workable idea here. Okay, so we're all gonna get together for the September meeting and with our ideas and we'll put together our survey at that time. So we, I, I think it's okay if you wanna make a list of here are some survey questions, okay. potential survey questions. I think that's all right to send out. Okay. If you say anything more, I think you yeah. shouldn't. Okay. okay. I'm right. I have so we've done before. we've done this uh, kind of survey with the town of Arlington, so I have some kind of I have some basis for comparison. I can also reach out to the Mass Cultural Council. Um, there are some, yeah. You know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's lots of places I can get these kind of questions. Um, right. Good. So I'll put I'll put that together and send it out to you. 
Um, I'll also be sending you a Google Doodle link for our September meeting. And uh, we'll get together then and talk about the survey and make a plan for how we are going to uh, uh, man and woman and other the table. <laughs> how we're going to, uh, who's going to be there and uh, et cetera. Uh, Robert, do you have anything you want to add? I just had one question about the meeting schedule. Um, uh, earlier in the year, I thought we we were kind of consistently meeting on Monday evenings. Uh, personally, that worked well for me. I I, was, I I don't know. Was there some reason that we kind of deviated from that? Because uh, it, well, it's just it seems yeah. like it's getting harder to schedule for everybody. And if we could choose. Uh, you know, a regular the third Monday as an example. You know, just throwing that out as an example, but something, something that's um, just consistent from from month to month. It, it might be easier for people to plan. I think um, with with summer, um, it's been really hard to get everybody in the room. Oh, so sure. The, the doodle sure. has helped us get consensus for what days work. Uh, I do agree with you. I would rather have a, a set day of the month. You know, what first Monday or second Monday or or something like that. Um, I can yeah. send out a uh, question to you all about that and see if what we all think. Because um, I would love to say, you okay. know, look at the calendar. The first Monday is when we always meet. Um, well, the other thing may be 6.30. Yeah, that's, I have no problem with starting a meeting at 6.30 or even 7 o'clock is fine for me. So, okay, I will send out, um, I'm going to send out one Google Doodle about that question exactly, Robert, about what day of the week works for everybody and what time of the month. Does that make sense? Like, so that we can actually narrow this yeah, down? Thanks. Okay. That sounds great. I can do that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I see that we are 7.01 you know how punctual I am. So I am going to uh, call, well, hold on, let me make sure I've, I've got everything here. Uh, is there any business not reasonably anticipated prior to 48 hours of this meeting? Does anybody have anything else they want to bring up? No. All, all good? Jim, you got anything? Nope. Okay, so I am going to call to adjourn if I can get someone to give me a second. So moved. All right. Thank you so much for coming to this meeting. Tom, thank you so much for participating. We're really happy to have you here. So Dara, good. I hope you feel better. Robert, can be I, careful driving, uh, please. Can I just ask everybody <laughs> agreed to adjourn, right? Yes, I okay. think that was understood. All right, fine. <laughs> and Jim, if you'll get up those July meetings uh, minutes when you can, and we'll look over those, and we'll approve both July and August at our September meeting. It'll be done in a couple of days. Awesome. You can send them to me if you need some uh, another hand with that. I'm happy to look them over. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Good night. Thank you. Good night.